The Common Agricultural Policy is the main farming subsidy scheme in the EU. But it can be easy to forget that the CAP also carries a lot of cloud outside the EU's borders. In a previous video explainer, we tried to answer the question, how does this policy affect the EU's neighbors and trade partners? You can find the link below in the description. But now we're going to put the question directly to agricultural stakeholders and decision makers from third countries. What do they think about the CAP's impact in their countries? A problematic aspect of any farming support scheme involves the kind of subsidy given to farmers, and in particular if it includes direct support. And this because it can create a sort of market distortion in countries that cannot afford direct payments, for instance. So the final result could be one of having subsidized products coming from abroad, which are cheaper than local products. We asked Beat Rösli, head of International Affairs Unit at the Swiss Farmers Union, if EU subsidized products are perceived as uh, problematic in Switzerland in terms of creating a sort of unfair competition with local products. The Swiss prices are always influenced by the European price, that's clear especially in the dairy sector, where we are also exporting a lot of cheese, baby food and stuffs. But however, the European imports are important for our food system because we are importing 50% of the consumption anyway, and most of it is coming from the European Union. At the end of the day, it doesn't make much difference if there is a subsidy or not. Since the Swiss requirements on production is very high anyway, the Swissness is an important price factor. So most of Swiss people are willing to pay double price for Swiss products anyway. So they will not take the cheaper German pork meat if they really like to eat a Swiss pork meat. Actually, Swiss and EU farmers sit in the same boat. At the end of the day, it's necessary that we all receive our direct payments for all our services that we deliver. As we've just heard, the near Switzerland doesn't seem to have a beef with the EU subsidized products. But what about countries that are very far away from us? Uh, we contacted Dilyar Kakimov, the ambassador of Uzbekistan mission to the EU, and we asked if the new push on agricultural sustainability in the forthcoming CAP reform will have any impact on his country. It will definitely have the impact on Uzbekistan and I believe to any other country which is uh, going to cooperate uh, with European Union. Basically what we see today is European Union uh, set the global standards. It's one of the, uh, I would say, few uh, states in the world which uh, provide the global standards in many areas and primarily in the climate and uh, agriculture. Likewise, we asked EU mission at the Embassy of the uh, Republic of Botswana if this focus on food system transition in the CAP reform could be also seen as a good practice for other countries in paving the way for a global shift towards sustainability. I believe that there is, um, there is effort being made, but more can still be made. To, more effort can still be played to ensure that our voices are heard. Not only the voices of the governments, the voices of the farmers themselves that are in our countries who are feeling the brunt of um, climate change that is going on or who are feeling the brunt of the um, competition that um, is coming in. So we believe that um, more should be done, more should certainly be done to ensure that all players, all stakeholders are, incorporated, are, are included in the discussion. Uh, for Botswana, we, uh, we have an agreement with the EU which provides a duty-free, quota-free market access. The question still say, remains, you are coming up with reforms year in, year out. There are some new standards that are set and our farmers have to play catch up so that they can be able to export to, to, to the EU market. The market is there is open, but the regulations that are being put in place are making it very difficult for our farmers to access the EU market. To conclude, we have talked about the impact of CAP in third countries so far, but we haven't talked about the impact of not having the CAP, which is the pretty unique position in which the UK finds itself right now. So the UK is the only country that is in the process of exiting the EU's common agricultural policy. But how will this impact farmers on the ground? I think there's 
Uh, a lot of pros and a lot of cons because the common agricultural policy obviously give farmers throughout Europe that sort of certain degree of financial stability in terms of food production, environmental standards. Um, we're all, you know, we're looking at sort of climate change right now. It's the top of the agenda for everybody. Uh, but the common agricultural policy in terms of um, that security of funding was always very important, seriously important, especially from a Scottish perspective. But we do now have that possibility of creating a policy that's fit for Scotland and doesn't have that same compliance that's been driven by Europe because in many instances what was coming from a European perspective it was quite sort of top-down approach and much of it didn't actually apply to Scotland so but we still had to abide by these regulations.